of the week. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys. This week's game of the week is none other than the Outlast Trials by developer Red Barrels and Oh buddy, I am so in love with this game right now. The Outlast Trials is essentially an online multiplayer horror game where you and your friends are tasked to complete various achievements and tasks, all the while being hunted by these deranged, psychotic lunatics. Like, I think maybe the best way to describe this is think like phasmophobia terror levels, but crank it to 11. Now, before we jump into like the details of this game, I definitely think we should point out it's technically still early access. And while the game itself feels pretty polished, I, I did run into like the occasional bug or hiccup, but it, it didn't take away from my overall experience with this game. Like there was this weird bug when I was playing with controller that it wouldn't allow me to like select items when upgrading, but Honestly, I'm getting way too ahead of myself here, so let's talk about the game's story. And I genuinely love where this game is taking place. The Outlast Trials is during the Cold War, and the Murkoff Corporation, who we've come to know and understand during the other Outlast games, have captured humans and are running mind control tests on them. And as part of these trials, you and your friends must go to like these various locations and complete tasks like killing a snitch, stopping lockdowns, framing the church, or putting children in a grinder. Not real children. Definitely should point that out. No, in fact, these are like little children dummies that are... Uh, Belong to uh, Mother Gooseberry, I think is what her name is. And part of the mission is like, you got to go into this amusement park, find them, throw them into the meat grinder and escape before Mother Gooseberry can get you. It's just typical, like, creepy. And that is probably the best word to describe Outlast is like creepy. Because while yes, the Outlast Trials is definitely terrifying, I found myself being more creeped out than anything. Like, developer Red Barrels essentially took everything that was awesome about the first two Outlast games. The atmosphere, the menacing enemies, the, the hopelessness that, and dread that you feel while playing, wrapped it all together and put it into like a multiplayer universe and somehow turned it into a fantastic game. Like, so often games are like, oh, we'll throw multiplayer in and it's just sucks, but for the Outlast Trials, multiplayer is really magical. But you know, I keep saying the word multiplayer a lot, and it's hard to define this game as a multiplayer game, because it also offers everything that you can do in multiplayer as a solo experience. That being said, you'd be a lunatic to play this game alone, but like, you can definitely play this game as a solo play. In fact, the tutorial that you start off with, you're forced to play that as solo, and legit, there were moments in that tutorial that I was like, I don't know if I can actually hang. Like this, this game's creeping me out. Mind you, I am a 33 year old man and yeah, I was getting creeped out by a video game. <laughs> Essentially, in this tutorial, you wake up and are sent out on the first trial, and it's like to this weird house where you're revisiting your childhood memories, and Mother Gooseberry's there, and she's like drilling people in the face, and you have to sneak throughout the house, avoid her at all costs, collect your files, and throw them into a grinder, which... Now that I'm saying that, it's kind of a trend going on with this game, like a lot of grinding going on. <laughs> but grinders aside, there is a point here that I want to talk about, because this is something that... Red Barrels did so well with this game. You know, as you're doing your missions, you, there's objects that you have to find. Uh, the, the child dummies or your files in the tutorials. And as you grab them, instead of saying like, oh, you grab them and you put them in your pocket, to add realism and, and terror to this, when you pick up an object, your speed shuts down by like a half. Like you're literally walking so slow. Uh, you're weighted down by the object, and, and this just adds like another degree of difficulty and, 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 and realism that when you're strategizing on how to play this, you gotta complete this mission with psychopaths, and they're chasing you, and, and you gotta decide whether like, should I drop the object here and, and go hide until the psychopaths run away, or hey, can I take some damage and maybe keep the object in my hand, but like complete the objective and just, and just run? And in my opinion, this is where multiplayer absolutely shines. Because when you're trying to like transport an object, you can either like leapfrog it, right? Like, hey, I'm gonna bring the object here, you take it, and I'm gonna take that killer, distract him, and keep him with me as you go complete the objective. Or you can be the hero, like 
I was multiple times and carry bricks and bottles and as your teammates are getting, you know, chased and they're about to get hit, throw a brick at the enemy and it stuns them giving your uh, teammate the ability to like get a little bit of a, of a lead or maybe even just completely escape from their gaze. Another thing that I thought that the game did so well that they really never did in like previous Outlast games was like adding a skill tree and perks to like ensure that like when you are playing in multiplayer, your offering to the team could be something completely different than everybody else. One of the ways that the Outlast Trials does this is by offering prescriptions. You can take these prescription pills and you can upgrade things like your stamina, your speed. They give you the ability to slide in game, kick down doors, smash, objects over enemies' heads, or stop the killer from executing your teammate completely. And these come in handy. Like, if I could say, like, you're playing early on and you're scared and you're not sure what to do, upgrade your prescriptions. I think that's the number one thing you could do. I did realize when there's, like, these giants walking down the hall, the slide is a great opportunity when they're swinging at you. You can, like, run and just slide underneath them to get away. Uh, smashing objects is great. You know, if there's a jump scare and someone grabs you and starts, like, beating you to a pulp, again, understand, uh, that might sound weird, but this is an Outlast game, and that happens a lot in the Outlast universe. But if they're beating you to a pulp, you can take a bottle or a brick and smash it over their head. It's a great upgrade to have. Now, that being said, the game also has, like, a class-based system in the form of rigs with uh, having perks like stun, blind, heal, and x-ray. And each one of these are enclosed within their own rig system. Stun allows you to throw an electrical shock object at your enemy, temporarily stunning them. Blind places like a land mind that when a psychopath or an enemy or a killer walks over it, it shoots out like a cloud of smoke where your enemies can no longer see you. Uh, heal, pretty straightforward, but you, you can pretty much like put out a fog of dust that heals all of your teammates in your surrounding area. An x-ray will allow players to see through walls and doors, temporarily showing you where your enemy's locations are. Now, in my initial runs, I played as a healer. Uh, I think that that's probably the best way to play because, you know, while the other ones are cool, I never really ran into issues with running away from enemies uh, until you get into, like, to the further difficulties. But if you're just playing this casual, like, being a healer, great way to go because there's certain points where, like, you get to a safe room and you can, like, heal your teammates. Uh, being a healer, a great option. Number two... I would probably think that the smoke cloud would be the big one because uh, that would definitely help. Uh, X-ray would be cool. But uh, again, I think having the ability to like shoot a smoke cloud out and be able to escape when you're trying to finish the level and like all hell is breaking loose and it's just getting absolutely crazy. Yeah, having that smoke cloud would definitely be a benefit. And I don't think we talked about it yet, but this game does have like rank. You know, there's like a weird little battle pass. You don't have to pay for it. So maybe calling it a battle pass isn't a really good idea. Um, as you rank up, you get rewards. Uh, you unlock like cosmetics, but also get like loot right things that you can upgrade your character's look your room uh do different things with but as you rank up you also get these green tickets that allow you to upgrade your prescriptions or even upgrade your rig system and how the game determines like how well you did is it will rank every single thing that you did throughout the trial and when i say everything i mean everything. As you go throughout the trial, you might get deducted points for setting off a trap, getting killed, taking damage. Uh, if you're taking too long to complete the mission, they might deduct points there. But on the flip side, you'll be awarded for like disarming traps, rescuing your teammates, discovering hidden objects, or even just completing the objectives of the mission. And this brings us to something that I, I absolutely adore in the game. Uh, you're, you're based in a mental institution or like in this facility where they're running tests on you. And in order to escape this facility, you have to gain tokens. So after doing a certain amount of missions, you get awarded a token. And once you get 10 tokens, you're allowed to basically leave the facility and enter the end game. Now, granted, I haven't done it yet. I, I don't know what's on the other side of the wall. But within this lobby that you're in, there's a giant like turnstile. And, and up there, it's just, the number is showing how many people have escaped. As of last night, it was like 230. So 230 people have actually made it to the end game. Uh, and that to me is like, oh man, I want to get in the end game. Like I want to be one of those numbers. And granted, it's not like, it doesn't mean anything in life. Like it doesn't mean I get Starbucks faster. It doesn't mean I get to check out at the grocery store quicker. But like, 
I want to be on that wall. So I'll, I'll definitely be kind of trying to do that. But there's more to the lobby than just that. Like there are vendors who will sell you prescriptions, rigs, or other things. There's mini games. So you can like compete in arm wrestling matches against other players. And of course, you also have your personal cell in this lobby, which like you can decorate with, by painting the walls, adding new carpets, changing the color of the sink, or like adding items to your bookshelf because hey, we're all gonna be here a while. You might as well make sure that your cell that you come back to at the end of the day after being killed and hunted down by psychopaths is, is your safe space. Like make sure your safe space is special, folks. But your cell is also the place where like you can choose various cosmetics for your in-game character. And yeah, it's a little silly to have like cosmetics for your character in this game, especially when it's like first person, but Trust me, it definitely lives up when you're playing multiplayer because like you're trying to survive in these matches and you're sneaking through and like you look over and your guy's wearing like slippers, a tank top and boxers and you're like, my chances of surviving may not be good, but that guy, that guy's gonna get killed. Now within this lobby, there's also a kiosk that allows you to like pick the missions that you want to complete, but there's also a squad up button and maybe it was because the game just came out, but like the squatting up, Fantastic. I had a team within like 30 seconds every single time. So kudos to that. Uh, I'll be interested to see like how in a couple weeks when like the hype around this game start to like level out, whether or not that, 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 uh, that ability to join a game or join a lobby is that easy. But as you're in this kiosk, you can select like randoms to complete duos, trios, or quad missions. And again, it was really easy to like find other players, but within this kiosk, you can also pick the difficulties. And word of warning to those of you watching this, there is a massive difference in difficulty because I played the majority of these matches on the base level and was able to complete them. I wasn't mastering them, but hey, I was able to complete them. But then I joined a group of randoms and like we played the hardest difficulty possible in this game. And my God, <laughs> like, we pretty much quit after like five minutes. We're like, yeah, there, there's no sense in even trying this anymore. <laughs> like the hardest difficulty, the mission doesn't change, but they add more enemies, there's more traps, there's fewer items to heal with, and just absolute chaos. Like, it, I, I can't describe it, but if you're literally playing on hardcore mode and enjoying it, hey man, hit me up in the comments because I, I want to know what you're smoking because I want some. Which on the topic of like squatting up, this is a fantastic time to talk about proximity chat, which is one of the brightest shining stars of this game because Red Barrels did such a fantastic job with the proximity chat in this game. And if you're playing this with friends or even with randoms, I highly recommend that you use in-game chat and don't use a third party app like Discord. As you get separated from your friends or your teammates in this game, the proximity chat ensures that as they get farther away from you, the, the softer and more quieter their voice gets, but as they get closer to you, the louder and more clear you're able to hear their voice. Because proximity chat led to probably one of my most favorite moments of playing this game. Essentially, I'm hiding in a locker, as one does while playing Outlast, and I, I hear my teammate faintly off in the distance screaming for help, and it just gets louder and louder and louder, and as I'm looking through the grates, I see my teammate run away, and then it fades off as like they're running down the hallway, but following them is this giant that's like thud, 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 and talking, but as the giant's walking by, again, proximity chat, like I hear it fade away. Like, the in-game audio design for this game I absolutely love it. And like, I'm just, I'm just having so much fun playing this game. Now, I'd love to know if anybody else is playing this game, uh, let me know in the comment section. I have a suspicion that the in-game psychopaths and monsters and killers, they can pick up on proximity chat. Uh, I haven't been able to confirm that or really test it out enough, but I was in a hallway with a teammate and there's this ugly looking giant that's like walking down and of course he's butt naked because it's an outlast game and instantly this andre the giant motherfucker just starts coming at me like any mother want the peanut and as someone who loves going to haunted houses during halloween i mean the outlast trials perfectly captures what it's like to go to a haunted house with your friends or even at the very least what it's like to complete an escape room with your buddies. And while I wasn't able to convince any of my friends to play this game with me this week, but while I was playing with randoms that joined my lobby, I've got to say like it was just such a fun time playing this game and while I enjoy a solo Outlast experience and I definitely enjoyed playing with myself on Outlast Trials, 
This is one of those unique games that the experience either as a solo player or as a multiplayer experience is so unique but also fun for its own reasoning. And personally, I can't wait to see what the developer does to expand this game moving forward. Because the experience that Red Barrels has created with the Outlast Trials is something so special. And I've seen some people compare this game to Phasmophobia. I mean, we did it in the intro of this video. But I think that that's like kind of a disservice because this game is something completely different. Sure, yes, they have their similarities. It's a spooky game and you're playing it with your friends. But, but the Outlast Trials requires you to use stealth strategy, teamwork, and just when you think you got the perfect plan, the sirens go off and the game adds like 13 enemies to the map and all hell breaks loose. And I don't care how good your plan was, you're not sticking to it because now you've got all these enemies you need to worry about. So to, to wrap this up, uh, GG to the team over at Red Barrel. This is such a gem of a video game and thank you for all your hard work on it. Uh, the Outlast Trials, of course, is this week's Game of the week.